Welcome, I'll be reacting to Penny Dreadful, Season 1, Episode 2. If you're wondering where's the first episode, check out the Should I Watch This playlist. It's been a little while since I reacted to the first one, so bear with me as I kind of get back into the world a little bit. This is a commentary. It is not a market substitute. Please support the original. And no spoilers in the comments. That includes any future character, actor appearances, or events. Dr. Frankenstein is the best, at least so far. I'm actually really glad they put this recap in. Oh no. Jack the Ripper was still active in this time period, right? This was the final year, 1891? She looks like a prime candidate. Yeah, because look at the rouge she has on. No lady would ever have rouge on. Not like that. That's ominous. The fog comes in. This show does atmosphere so well. Mm-hmm. That was a good intro. Billy Piper. I don't think we've seen her. Or if we have, I forget. This intro is so beautiful. Oh, wow. I guess he saw a lot last night. He stayed fairly calm in the moment, though. You have any whiskey? Any more pertinent question might be as follows. Have any you money, yeah. Money? Oh. Oh. <laughs> mm. I love how they're doing this. I know. You shall choose your own name. Yes. My mother taught me many things. So one must always have Shakespeare close to hand. That is a good policy. What name is it gonna be? <sighs> Proteus. Not to mention, Protoss is first. No, I'm sorry. I. I have to leave you now. We'll just get him a hat and he can come along. After all, I have two mouths to feed now. No, no. You stay. I'll be back presently. Don't leave him. I mean, to be basically born and then abandoned immediately. I mean, I get it. He has to make income. But this is uh, all alone. Billy? It's Billy. I was employed here in the entertainment business. Jesus, you're not an actor, are you? Not precisely. Praise the Lord for that. <laughs> one by one, we were all replaced by better new machines. Yeah, that's what it's looking so like hard. in the future, too. <coughs> oh, poor thing. I've seen Billy in a lot of things. I feel like this is the most different she's felt. A lot of times it's like Billy Piper playing whatever it is. But she's really embodying the character here. I'm digging it. Thank you for the breakfast, Mr. Chandler. Properly fortified. I'm off to look for work that a machine can't do yet <laughs> anyway. This is so relevant to all the AIs of our time. I love her writing desk. Dr. Frank and it locks. Romantic poetry, Doctor. <laughs> Man does not live only in the empirical world. <laughs> we must seek the ephemeral. I, I love that line. You must seek the ephemeral. I hope it's satisfactory. And you have two mouths to feed now. I'm sure it will be. If you discover anything pertinent in the hieroglyphics, let me know. Or even something ephemeral. <laughs> What was all that poetry? Just flirting. What is she doing here? What a gorgeous house. I love the blue walls. Thank you so much for coming. My name is Dorian Gray. 
Run! Run, Billy! Oh no. That was great how they had them in the scene and there were all those portraits on the walls. I should have guessed. These from Spitalfield. Uh, they're not for the faint-hearted. My heart's never fainted. <laughs> I love the writers on this show. Were they drained of blood? No. So not a vampire. How old was she, the daughter? A werewolf? Seven. A hide? What was her name? Was it the Ripper back again? Unlikely. Yeah, I was thinking Ripper too. You see, you're hunting for a man. You need to start hunting for a beast. Beast. Mm. Oh, what a great dressing gown. There's blood. This is consumption. I suppose he would be immune to it, right? With the portrait? I've never fucked a dying creature before. Do you feel things more deeply, I wonder? All right, so we need to find a cure for Billy. I can handle your legal problems. The federal marshal has been paid. Stop your foolishness and do as I instruct. Your father. Oh dear. What a lovely family. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. But now once more, sure. And it's time for us to leave her. Oh, the rats have gone and we the crew. I've actually asked for this to be sung at my funeral. Love that sea shanty. Boat, boat. Boat. Was some of his body and brain and stuff from a sailor? And he's starting to remember? But perhaps this was your trade. You could have been a whaler as I am a doctor. Mm -hmm. That is so sweet. He saw the doctor was upset and he like tried to pour a cup of water. Oh. Show us the gown. I want to see the gown. I love this color on her. Oh, she can probably sense something's off about him unless she already knows him. You do not like it here. You are close to it. You are the only woman in this house not wearing gloves. That is true. Your hands want to touch. He has almost mesmerizing powers, I think. Oh, I've seen her in a few things. She's great. Gentlemen, please remove your jewelry. What's going on? Ladies, please Seance. remove your gloves. I believe we're about to commune with the spirit. Mm -hmm. Why the jewelry, though? I mean, I guess the gemstones could interfere with some of the energy levels. I ask you to suspend your disbelief. At least three people at the table are semi-supernatural. This should probably work. Nice performance. That's a vampire-esque accent. There's another here. Oh, of course. Well, they're certainly giving a good show. Will you name a mountain after me? Are you proud of me? Ooh. If vampires are technically dead, could they come to a seance like this? You knew I was dying. Uh. Didn't you, father? Oh, wow. The performance here. Basically watching his daughter die in front of him in a way. Who is it now? Is she the vampire? No, much older. <gasps> oh. Of course, you gotta have the bending backwards. Well, at least that party is going to be the talk of the town for a while. So I think they're going to get their translation. Our usual repast. 
I won't say no. And call me Bruno. Well, either way you say that is ridiculous. Ms. Croft. <laughs> There's no Z in it. I'm a maritime supervisor. <laughs> you look at ships all day? <laughs> Almost had a collision last night. It was thrilling. <laughs> These two are kind of cute. You eating? I like her capelet. But if one is to engage with the primordial forces of darkness, one must expect a bit of social awkwardness. <laughs> That's true. Amonet was the consort of Amun Ra, one of the great gods. Okay, yes. He was the first hidden one, the original serpent prince. Everlasting, perpetual life. Vampires. Sustained by feeding on the souls of others. All right, so we're dropping in some Egyptian mythology, a bit like Stargate. I like it. Outside of this room, and it's all going to be very new to you, so try to stay calm. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And keep your hat on. Traditionally, staying calm is not necessarily the first thing that comes to mind. These two are so sweet. I'm so worried about them. <laughs> He's like a kid, he wants to touch everything. So cute. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Chestnuts. Chestnut. He's like mind blown. No, that's something called gaslighting. It's an invisible chemical, which means you can't see it. It has combustible properties. Fairy lights. Flame, it's thus. okay, Victor. Just go with it. Victor, fairy lights. Mm -hmm. Who am I to argue? Now that is a beautiful shot. Uh, yes. Scow. Yes. Bark. Topsail. Bowline. Jib. Definitely a sailor. How do you do? My name is Mr. Proteus. <laughs> Oh, and this is Miss Croft. How do you do, Miss Croft? My name is Mr. Proteus. This scene reminds me a little bit of My Fair Lady because the doctor has been trying to teach him basic how to interact with people, but he's still trying to remember how. So he's like, I am Mr. Proteus. And it's just like she was at first. Like at the races, that first scene where she arrives and is like, It is good to meet you. The rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain. Miss Croft, oh. chestnut. Oh, have a jelly baby. It's <laughs> very kind. <laughs> Friends are something different. They're people you've known for a while. You're comfortable with, close to you. Like Victor. Yes. Yes. I shall have many. Ten. Ten More friends. than ten. Mm. If we... <gasps> no! The real creature. So this whole time, the real creature has been alive. This wasn't the first one. Oh no, this means he learned from his mistake and he was trying to do better with this second creation. He was so careful and loving and gentle. Oh no. I'm honestly glad that they introduced Brona because even though she is technically dying of a terminal illness, she has such a joy and kind of inner beauty to her 
that she's a breath of fresh air whenever she comes on screen. And with all this macabre stuff going on, I think it balances the show really well because it could have gone extremely dark and having her coming in and out of scenes every now and then kind of resets the feeling of the show so when the next horrifying thing happens, it hits you as hard as the first time rather than kind of taking us down and then staying there. Since she's in the opening credits, I'm assuming she'll be recurring, which will be very fun. This was a great episode. They give just enough tidbits of mysterious information to keep you hooked. The cast is great. And that shock ending. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>